Hello and welcome, it's Tony UK here. Today we've got something a little different for you. You'll hear familiar people, but talking about a very different subject. As many of you will know, I came into the Flat Earth via the debates. However, my real passion is ancient civilizations, and it's especially that of Egypt. I made a trip to Egypt in June of 2019 and captured some fantastic images and video, as well as unrivaled access to the places that few have ever visited. You'll see a short two minute highlight introduction of the Abydos Temple and the mysterious subterranean Assyria. We will then dive into a lengthy two hour conversation about this with Angel, myself, and Sleeping Warrior, Anthony Riley. I hope you enjoy this conversation and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. So uh, I've been interested in Egypt, like a lot of people, since um, being a very young boy, I don't know, sort of six, seven, eight years old, um, maybe even younger, actually, you know, probably since I knew about Egypt, like many people, wanted to go there. I'm now God, nearly 50, uh, and I've been wanting to go for about six or seven years. In fact, I wanted to go, actually, uh, before the troubles in Egypt, uh, but the wife wasn't keen, and then we had kids and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so uh, what I did about three years ago... So I did really want to go uh, before I was too old to go, is I put in um, a request to be part of this organization called Oracle. So this is run by Dr. Robert Schock, you know, the person who controversially redated the Sphinx. Uh, yeah. So Dr. Robert takes a trip of mostly Americans, actually, but some Europeans uh, to Egypt on a two week sort of tour with Dr. Robert Schock. Uh, now, there's a couple of good things about that particular trip, um, which he he was doing annually because he basically took it over from uh, Anthony West, uh, who, who, of course, you know. Who, who, yeah, exactly. Uh, and so uh, I think the first one that uh, Robert did is because um, Anthony West had obviously got a group of people who were expecting to go and then he died. Um, but I think he's now going to do it, I think, about every other year. And he's going to trips to Bolivia and other places. But anyway, I got on this trip. Um, or I didn't get on the trip, actually. I was on the waiting list. And then luckily he added an extra trip um because they weren't going to go for like two years um so they said they had added an extra trip i got on this and, and and that's how i got to to go to egypt and get the kind of access that you will see shortly because um i think uh, certainly from looking at other people's footage the type of access you get very much depends on who you go with and so if you're obviously going with a big name and a big group especially americans who've got lots of dollars 
uh, you tend to get um, you know, b slightly better access right, to certain places. So, for example, we were two hours unattended with no guards at all inside the uh, Grand Pyramid. Uh, literally, I could have chipped bits off it uh, had I wanted to do something so ghastly as that. Um, I, by the way, I did get lots of samples from various places, but not chipping any parts of the, the Grand Pyramid off. Um, you know, also, uh, access to the Sphinx at dawn for four hours before any uh, tourists are there. So I got to go some really, really very exciting places, um, you know, where normally you, you, you'd be walking around and you wouldn't see very much. Um, now, just before you go on, let me just interrupt. Um, just a yes, no. Have you read the book, The Geese of Power Plants by Christopher Dunn? I have. Yeah, have you? yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, I'm very okay. familiar with it. Okay. Uh, now, um, one of the things that interest me most with, with well with, with most areas of study by the way I do have a bit of a background in, in archaeology I did uh, a number of evening courses with the university some some time ago so I've got a little bit of a and my mother by the way was a, an archaeologist for about five six years as a job actually um, so surveying and archaeology of, of ancient sites neolithic sites actually so you know uh, and actually my father's historian so um, yeah there's quite a bit of, of background of that type uh, in the family um, so one of the things I was interested in was, like most people, uh, various, the different sites and the different questions. Um, something that particularly interested me was the ability um, to decide on questions of structure. So I'd already seen some structures that I felt were, were difficult maybe to explain through conventional methods. Uh, and I'm not on the woo uh, I'm not using that as a derogatory term. So when you go on these trips, right, people go, are you woo, are you non-woo? And there's this, these big debates. Uh, you know, are you on the spiritual side? Do you believe this, that and the other? Um, you know, I'm uh, very much a sort of pragmatist and, and very evidence-based person. Um, and I wanted to basically try to collect some kind of evidence that I could use. So one of the things I did do was, um, so I'd been interested because the Christopher Dunn um, interest in the uh, core samples and the other bits that he's interested in, in terms of machining the, the the granite by the way i come from an area of the uk called cornwall where there is a lot of granite uh, so i know granite as a rock very well and i know exactly how hard granite is um, and i've worked with granite a little bit so i know that it is not an easy rock um, you know it's not like limestone for example right to be able to shape or manipulate so i know it's a very very difficult rock now um, there's always the questions about the uh, and i'm again i'm presume we're all on the same page in terms yeah, yeah. of using sort of copper chisels and rocks yep totally um if i could invite if i could invite angel to steer the conversation would you allow him to steer it the way that he wants to because really what i want to try and do is get him to ask you questions and give you you give your answers based around what he's hoping to get from this because i know that there's areas specifically that angel wants to explore okay can so, so give me two more minutes right because i'll yeah. go through where i went yep and what particularly interested me there's other bits i'm sure i went to and got pictures of that may well interest you that don't particularly interest me so my particular interest is in the machining specifically of rock and the construction techniques i took samples from inside the serapium if you know what the serapium is it's the area where there it's are a those big battery casks. yeah there's about 22 underground casks there um, you know, yet to be ascertained how they exactly built it. Um, uh, there's some very interesting facts about it if you've ever actually also been there and there's quite a lot of information. I took samples from inside there. So my hope was that they were either using unconventional tools, you know, there's a whole geopolymer debate, which I'm sure we can get into, or they were maybe using tools of some sort, maybe powered by something, let's not say what, uh, uh, but certainly totally physical cool. tools with diamond totally blades. Cool. Yeah, totally. hang on. Did you hear just, what you just said? Yeah, yeah, he said it was a battery, um, and we'll get to that. Uh, and what I was looking for in taking the samples, which I can show you pictures of, by the way, the micro samples, was whether if they were using diamond blades to shape these, uh, you could find any trace of that, right? Because if you've got a load of guys cutting um, those blocks, which they did a little bit on the outside, then they took them underground, then they finished them, um, you know, may well have some some evidence for that. But anyway, I'll I'll let you guide it. So I went to the Assyrian. Assyrian is very very interesting. In fact, probably the most fascinating place of all, actually. For now you're talking about the one that's on the other side of the um, Nile that's actually in Cairo. Which one? The Serapium. It's like no, 20 it's miles Serapium. away from the Giza. No, so the Serapium's down in. Um, the Serapium is. Hang on, I need to get my map out. It, it, it's get a map out. It, 
dozen so miles away from the yeah that's Mata. right and it's buried underground yeah. it's totally underground yes. it was found by march and forgotten the guy begins with an m back in about 18 something they thought right. it was used yeah. for burying apis balls in it's got these uh mysterious things that done spent a lot of time in there and i've got a lot of pictures of it um you know with these underground cut mostly granite but some of them are basalt um, blocks all out of the same block which is of course very interesting so they didn't make a lid out of one bit and a base out of another um they made it out of one single block for whatever reasons i mean they have lids obviously and they have bases but they didn't just you know when they cracked one they threw the whole lot away they didn't just go make another lid out of are you familiar at all with a brine water salt water battery um i i have seen some of the theories on it obviously no um, no they not, they exist you can make them like better. with an egg carton and like like pools of water i mean mm -hmm. you can make a battery out of brine water and salt water it's it's mm. just you know a, a home science project mm. I mean, it's, it's not a theory. It, it's a, you know, it's like that's like saying a Tesla coil is a theory. <laughs> you know, yeah, so it's, any, anyway, area, when you, it's, it's not something I'm familiar with, is what I'm saying. Okay. Well, battery is a group of cells, and the cells each hold a little bit of electricity, and together they multiply it, just like your car batteries and all the other stuff. They, uh, in order to get 12 volts, you have six two-volt cells. And the uh, batteries that we're talking about would hold about 1.23 volts per cell. And they have like 20, I think it's 22, 23 cells inside the serapium. So, I mean, that would give you like, what, 40 volts or something. Mm -hmm. And the, it's, you know, we didn't know what a battery was up until like a you know the late 1800s mm -hmm. so um and, and people really don't fathom when you're walking around a structure of that size that you're standing inside a huge battery mm -hmm. but i when you look at the construction of it and you know look at it if you know make a model of it on a smaller scale it, it's a freaking battery it was a huge battery but it was battery. That's, I'm, I'm sticking to that. Either way, mm -hmm. um, I, I do think it's an awesome construction. And I'm also very... Uh, and assuming it's a battery, by the way, which... The, I... what, what you want to call the geopolymer, the uh, fabricated rock, mm -hmm. for multiple reasons. Um, but I, I do believe that it, they are fabricated. But either way, the physical construction, the physical layout is really what I'm most interested in, how it was constructed, the, the actual methods. Those are all speculation and up for debate, but many of the tests that they've done on the rocks all point towards fabrication. Um, many of them has to do with the infused water, which is something you don't get out of natural rock, the air bubbles they found inside of them, which you don't get in natural rock, and, um, well, just the fact that the casing stones on the outside of the structure all fit together with laser, not laser, but, you know, razor per precision. Like they are so thin, you can't stick anything between them, which would be evidence of fabricated poured rock. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a number of theories of that. <clears throat> I think um, maybe with the limestone, I mean, geopolymer, I think is a, I mean, I think it's got a lot to... Um, well, I'll bring some pictures up in a sec so we can have a look at some pictures because that will immediately spark some, some debate. Um, I think, yeah, it, it explains one thing, right, which explains how they get such massive structures built in one place. Um, I struggle, yeah, with some of the large granite monoliths. How exactly well, I don't, you I don't believe that every mm. stone within the structures are fabricated, but I do believe that many of the construction stones, the the foundational, you know, structure is fabricated. Some of them may be organic from the earth rock, but, mm -hmm. you know, a, a majority of them, I really do believe, are fabricated. And um, what kind of date do you put it at? We might as well get some broad brush strokes in, I guess, quite early on. 
What kind of date timeline do you think we're thinking about? Younger Dryas, older Dryas? Well, that really Invention. goes down to how how much you think we've been lied to. For all I know, they could be 500 years old, and our history has completely been distorted, and we've been lied to about a lot of things in order to completely throw us off. Or they could be tens of thousands of years old because it was a prior civilization that has long since been destroyed either you know, by war or some natural event. And mm -hmm. uh, the people that survived and repopulated the planet, sorry, repopulated the Earth, Mm. Um, you know, you can say didn't know what they I'm, were. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm very easy on these things. I don't get triggered easily, as uh, I'm sure uh, uh, Anthony has told you. I'm, you know, I, I listen to a lot. I'm, I'm a pretty respectful person. You know what I mean? It's, um, you know, planet globe. My, call it what you like. Now, let me just quickly share it, and then, uh, then we'll we'll start to look at some pictures, and then uh, so I'll show you this Syrian because I think it probably is the most interesting, and it will touch on a number of things. And I'll probably show you something probably you've not seen before, though I know you're interested. Further down south, it's on um, um, right. So it's an unusual structure because it was found intact. Okay, uh, it's got these, uh, and this is why I think you may be interested in it. It's got these. Uh, it was only found in about 1880, and they found one passageway, which we'll see in a sec. This was all covered over. Uh, obviously, the Romans had found it. Uh, by the way, can you see the screen? Otherwise, I'm just talking to, to nothing. Okay. Uh, you can see here old quarry marks, by the way, uh, from the Romans. This was roofed, by the way, with these two massive blocks here. Okay. These are granite blocks. We'll see the granite closer up in a sec. And then some smaller blocks on top of it. So it was basically covered and someone fell into it. It's very unusual in the construction. has mortar and tennis joints. Can you see them here? Mortar and tenon joints. Can you see this one? Okay. I'll show some more in a sec. Yep, closer up. It's got these... Is either... Uh, on. That picture isn't either the one you were just on. Yeah, I'm still on it. Flip back and forth. No, no, I'm still on it. I've not moved. Okay, then it, it glitched on the screen. Go on, okay, keep yeah. Talking. Yeah, I'll move in a sec. I'll, I'll give the broad brush strokes and then you can. We'll see plenty of pictures. There's going to be about 100 odd pictures of this. <clears throat> I'll, I'll explain in a bit why it's quite interesting. It's got these odd little rooms around it. It's got these odd water pools. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, it's got the classic, um, no, what do they call it, um, marshmallow construction. You know where they take the granite and it almost looks like in Bolivia they have it as well, or Peru, uh, where it almost looks like a marshmallow. It's like rounded, but all the stones fit together really well. It's got that construction. These rooms are really extremely unusual, and I do mean extremely, and I'll show you in a bit what I mean by extremely unusual. I mean, they just look like rooms here, right? But you'll see in a sec what I mean. Uh, they claim obviously it's got a ceremonial purpose and it's uh, whatever a church kind of thing or whatever, yeah, temple. Uh, yeah, I, I think really it's don't... probably much more functional. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I absolutely agree with you on that. And then you're going to see some really, really super interesting things to do with what they did to the wall over the back here. But I need to obviously show you that, 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 that bit. So we'll start moving for a few pictures. And by the way, if you want to go back or stop at something, just tell me. There's quite a few here. I've got close ups of most of the stuff that's, that's significant. Um, so this is a nice sort of starting one. I am now at the end of it. The passageway they found is this door over here. This massive lintel we'll look at in a sec. We're looking along this lovely pool. It's, it's virtually empty. The, the, the marks you see here are because the Nile has risen since this was built, whenever it was built. Let's say it was built six, seven thousand, eight thousand 8,000 years ago. Yeah, this is the Nile and it keeps coming in, drying a bit and going up. So these lines you see here are not natural on the rock. They're not like a, a rock. Um, you know, they're, they're sediment, yep, that have been deposited, as you can see, as the Nile goes up and down. We were very lucky because when we were there, as you can see, the Nile was very low, yep, so we got access to a lot of the bits of this that you wouldn't, wouldn't normally see, uh, and someone's taken the roof off, uh, unfortunately. So we'll move through a bit. This gives you an idea. This is all granite, and you can already see just from this picture how flat this granite is, okay? By the way, this is limestone, uh, and as you know, um, your theory, mine, Dunn's, lots of people's theories, um, they liked to mix. And they definitely, this is one thing I definitely know is true about Egypt. They definitely liked to use stones a bit like we might use metal, let's say, right? I think they had some kind of property. I don't claim what it is. Um, you know, we could speculate, but they definitely used granite and limestone in certain places for certain reasons. They didn't just you know, take one kind of stone and take another. Well, Obviously, this is all about you... Sorry. Would you disagree if I said, um, if I corrected slightly and said they tended to use stone the way we would use concrete rather than metal? Because yeah. we don't have metal pillars like that, do we? No. So the reason I'm saying metal is I think there was more of a conductor. Well, well we did inside the World Trade Centers, but we all know what happened to that. 
so, so I don't think it was just for construction. I think there was an energy or a, another functional purpose to their choice. Yeah, let me put it like that. Is um, that you in the picture? Sorry, no, 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 no. That's I don't know some Australian guy there is with. No, no, you'll see me. I'll come up and say. Anyway, let's let let's move on. Right. So here here's a really good example. Right. This picture is the smoking gun, and you're going, well, it's boring, Toady. There's a couple of doors. What the hell are you talking about? Okay. So first off, if we were building this, um, you know, doorway, this little, um, it's like a little room, like a monk might go meditate in it or whatever. I'm not saying, by the way, they did that, but it's a little, little room of some purpose. And you'll see inside the room in a sec. I'll take you inside. Okay. This is two massive, great granite blocks that are laid down. They have this marshmallow look, you know, this kind of like curved corners. They round in a bit, as you can see here. Can you see it rounds in, rounds in? You kind of put a credit card between them, all the good classic stuff. Okay. If you look at this block that they made this like lintel out of, right? If we built a lintel um, and we wanted the room to be higher, we wouldn't chisel away all of this rock. Can you see how much rock they removed to get the exact height they wanted of the door? Yeah. Can you see? They put one down, they put another down, and they went, oh, the door's not quite high enough for what we need. I know, we need it to be. What makes you more... think it was chiseled? Well, this is what I'm saying. All right. Sorry, I'm, I'm using colloquial terms because we'll get into that in a sec, all right? I don't think it was chiseled, right? Okay, but removed, removed, okay? So then they put this Well, it may never been there to begin with if it was poured, but that's a whole other issue. Okay, now, interesting bit. You notice the uh, marshmallow. Oh, by the way, you notice this crazy block here. Look, again, we would never build a block like this, put an L shape here, go along here, put a tiny thing in there, and then do this. There is no way we would ever build a, you know, we'd use uniform blocks, right? We wouldn't go, oh, well, it, yeah, it looks like they're trying to keep as much of the granite as possible, right? By not removing this bit or not removing that bit. Because we just move well, it off. There's We're... another interpretation. Yeah, keep going. They're, they're not building it. They're, like Angel just said, pour, pouring, pouring it. Yeah, po po possibly, possibly. This is granite though, right? So it's got crystals of mica, quartz, and feldspar in it, which are, we don't know how to make that as a geopolymer. Anyway, hang on, there's another bit. So whoever built this built it, and we know that's a fact because obviously it's there, so they built it, right? At some point, and I'm not saying it's contiguous with whenever it was built, can you notice this bit of wall up here? And can you notice there are these, quote, scoop marks out of it? Can you see this wall here, up in this corner? Yeah, it looks yeah, like a I'm different stone. stone. Yeah, well, it isn't. It isn't at all. What this is, is it's completely flat. So this stuff is rough, as you can see, and it's like got this, what they call the marshmallow effect, you know, where it curves in. Each block is like rounded in to the join. This looks like someone has just gone down with a paintbrush and just smoothed it. This is, by the way, perfectly smooth, as you can see. This is the granite underneath, by the way. It's the same stone. But they have only smoothed this little corner of it and then stopped for some reason. By the way, can you see it? Almost looks like their brush was a certain, you know, about this width. It's like they brushed it down, brushed it down. You know, like we would shave a carrot or shave a potato. You know, if you're peeling potatoes, right, and you're shaving the stuff off, almost like that, like the old cheese, like you're shaving a bit of cheese off. It How is, do you know um, it's the same? Well, so... Because it uh, was there. Yeah, not only did I get up there, we know it's the same rock, and now I'll show you some more. The, the, the crazy bit is they didn't do this before they assembled it as well. They did it in situ, and I'll show you the roof in a set. There's another picture. We see it. Here you go. Look at this. So look, they did it with the roof in place. So they built the thing, put the roof in place, and somehow someone got up here and melted it with acid. I mean, by the way, there's no known acid that will smooth granite, just to be clear. The only way that we could cut granite like that would be with a high pressure water jet. OK, and I don't think we could do it in an angle like this. So when we cut granite these days, right, you use a, a very high pressure water jet that has got um, some kind of grit in it. I can't remember. I think it's, um, I don't know, it's a precious, so, so it's not diamond. But anyway, it's got a grit in it, a high pressure water jet, and you can cut granite pretty well. Yeah. Now, obviously, the Egyptians supposedly didn't have any of that kind of technology. And also, I don't think we could even do it and get it in situ like this because we can cut it in a machine, but we can't kind of get it in. And can you see they've done it and they've and they've just stopped. It's like they've gone. Da, 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 da. Oh, well, now we'll stop. We'll stop the job. We won't finish it. Can you see they've got one of these uh, these bobbles here as well? And can you see it almost looks like strips going down? And this is the hardest rock pretty much known to man. Granite is like eight on most scale of hardness, right? Granite is not something that you easily mess with. And they have literally just smoothed it. It's the most mind blowing thing probably that I've, I've seen in the whole of Egypt because it's 
there is no way that we could possibly and i know people say this super urgent we couldn't build it we could build the pyramids blah 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 i'm sure we probably couldn't build the pyramids but but, but this is really there's no explanation there's no copper chisels here there's no uh, hunks of rock supposedly smoothing it down because look at it it's just incredibly smooth i'm amazed by the way that they must be suppressing this because probably they don't let many people in the assyrian so i haven't seen this on any other videos i've never seen anyone point this out and it is just literally to me mind-blowing and by the way you can see the roof that was on top before the 1800s as well which is smooth too so they smoothed this smoothness smoothed this and then stopped anyway we'll continue because there's more to come um this is the same side so i'm now standing in the bit over here that's smoothed these are blocks that have fallen down um here's a sort of overview of it probably not the best overview by the way this is the tunnel that they fell into which is how they found this uh let's skip through these a bit you get the kind of scale of the size there and by the way can you see how how um um by the way my it was obviously underground and it obviously so, had this incredibly thick roof on it uh, i don't so know why has this been excavated was this originally covered with sand right this was they fell into it in the 1880s this is underground so the first thing I, there's probably some better pictures this is underground okay it is made out of these blocks of granite you can see here and these massive blocks of granite here it's got limestone bedding here it goes down into some more rooms here which we'll see down into but we won't be able to get into the rooms because they're all flooded now later on so it's at least on two levels they did some geophysics which said it's probably got another level below so there probably is another layer below this uh, they only found it because they fell into this tunnel that you can see here and then they came through here and then they excavated the whole of it um, they removed quite a lot of sand. A lot of it was um, hollowed out anyway. Um, and this was covered up. So that's why it survived so well. Here we go. And let me just find some. Hang on. Uh, right. So this is going into the tunnel that they fell into. This will probably be pretty much the sequence. Now you've walked through the tunnel and you're about to get start to come into the entrance. And this is the entrance. And this is the entrance of another temple that they built alongside it. Because, by the way, it's the back of the Abydos temple. And here we go. This is now, the you're using the word temple because that's the names they gave to it. You're exactly. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not describing now. This is the entrance to the Assyrian. So the, the, you've got the Abydos temple, which probably is a temple when we see Abydos. I'll show you some pictures of Abydos in a sec. That's like at the front. By the way, that's where you've got the famous bird man and all that kind of stuff in Abydos. Uh, and then behind it is this buried Assyrian. And this is what we're looking at now. This Assyrian. This is the big front monolith at the front. Now, a couple of things about this, because this is another mind blower. OK, first off, this is ancient. This is not something that someone put in in modern times. So this is ancient. Can you see this? This is rose granite from Aswan. Aswan is about 300 miles away from the Assyrian. So they grabbed this massive block 300 miles. Can you notice something about it as well? Something unusual. So this is granite. Can you notice anything odd about the way that it looks? Yeah, there's a seam across the top where it seems to have suddenly stopped. Yep. So a couple of ideas, right? Number one, they cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. And like you do with a bit of wood, they couldn't be bothered to cut the last bit because it would taken them a long time and they just snapped it off. You know, like you might do with a barbed chocolate if you've ever sawn the wood. I don't know if you've ever done any DIY or anything. You know, like if you're sawing something and you're getting near the end and you can't be bothered, you just snap it. Either that or... Maybe this block was L-shaped and this actually protruded out. But can you see it's completely different? It looks like it's just been cracked. Can you see? So they cut it, cut it, cut it with whatever they were using. And can you also see there's almost like saw marks on this? Can you see? Almost like striation saw marks. It's just amazing. And this is granite, by the way, rose granite. Um, these are all rose granite. And if you notice, they're really smooth. You know, we were looking at the ones inside. These are as smooth as those ones that are inside. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, here we go. Here's another good example. But How do you interpret that? Totally. Sorry? How do you interpret that? Um, I think they used a machine to cut it of some sort, is my interpretation. But the other bit, I don't know. You, well, you, my views well, will come out. You know me, I'm, 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 some, <laughs> I'm someone who likes to progress slowly. Yep. But by the way, I just don't have an explanation. It really is the truth. Look at this block. Again, they did this. They cut it like this. Then they went down and then they did this all the time. By the way, this is why this has survived earthquakes so long, because it's so um, interlocked like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, or that's why this is. So let's move on a bit again. Can you see the rough and the smooth? 
perfectly smooth granite again. Absolutely amazing stuff. Do you not? Uh, do, you not gonna... do you not think they've done that on purpose to demonstrate that they created it rather than it was like fluke? Possibly. Are, are you familiar with that one? Um, there's one piece inside the king's chamber. There's one stone that basically, when they put it over the over the doorway in the king's chamber. There's no re it, there's no reason for it being there because it's not load carrying, but it's like a it's like an odd stone. Angel will be able to show you in his pictures in a bit, but um, they do stuff on purpose to demonstrate things that we miss. Uh, 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 there you go. There's another odd one down in the Sphinx Temple. They've got one black basalt block, and all the rest is granite, right? They do. I mean, they do do a lot of that odd what we would think of as odd. Hang on, let me quickly show you. Right. So you need to get your head around this picture a little bit you are now inside one of those little rooms rooms whatever storage whatever you want to call it uh you can start to see that every single one of these rooms so i'm now standing inside one of those little rooms actually maybe this is actually a video no obviously not um and they've all got this odd look can you see this angle that they've cut this stone out again and by the way see this stone they've eld the stone to make it a cornerstone can you see they've do you see what I mean? They're cutting yeah, all unnecessary out. engineering. Exactly. Totally unnecessary engineering. If you were making this, there is no way you'd be cutting all that out. And by the way, why do it at a slant as well? Maybe because it's stronger. And can you see? They've done a slant on the other they're side as well. Us, they're telling us that they've done it because they can, not because they needed to. Can you see? Another slant, locked in. And then this one is slanted and locked in. And all these are L-shaped in the corner. So again, I mean, look, and again, another one. I won't bore you with the same thing. Um, these are the main granite blocks, and as you can see, really, really huge. We've seen a few of them before. Ah, this is a nice bit. Can you see this mortise and tenon joint? Can you see? Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you the crazy thing about this, and this is what makes me think maybe, maybe geopolymers or maybe melty rocks. Can you see there's a lip on it? You see yeah. that lip? So, so you either had to cut all this and then just leave that little lip in making it, or obviously if this was geopolymer or plastic or like you say concrete you could just but look there's a lip on both sides it's just crazy and then how do they make the shape cut the shape out so that the, the rock in the top fits into it i mean just if you climbed up there you see that little tunnel yep. to the left of the entrance hang on it keeps skipping hang on yeah what here uh, or here move your mouse around here well here there's two entrances yep this, right. this is to like the left take your mouth Zala to the left, whatever that guy's name is what well, here no 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 yeah. uh, up to the entrance where you just were to yeah. the left like a millimeter yeah down right there yeah by any chance did you explore that little tunnel this bit here this tunnel here I didn't. Didn't even know there was a tunnel there. Actually, we st I stood here for ages. I don't remember. I probably got some film standing there. Actually, I don't recall there being a tunnel there. Well, I, I can. I have photos of people who are up in that area, and from the external, there's there's a little tunnel there. Okay. But I'm I'm interested so, in how deep it goes and the configuration. So unfortunately, I did. I went inside the pyramid, and I went inside the grand gallery, and down into the pit, as they call it, and all yeah. of that stuff. But I didn't, no, no, no. I'll, I, well, as we go through this, we'll come across the, I took some film, by the way, here as well, because it was a lovely night and we were looking out, but then it was night. Yeah. So, by the way, when I was here, it was nighttime. Okay. Yeah. So, didn't go there. No. So, let's well, keep going. Well, go back there stuff. again, if you can yeah. explore that area. <laughs> so, by the way, here's all the tool marks. This, you know, because remember, I know you're not into tools, but here's, the saw marks that have been cut. That wasn't oh, cut. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm fully... Yeah. Uh, on the belief that they had power tools, both, you know, um, Brent look. Frazier, uh, Chris Dunn, uh, the guy with the beard, uh, uh, name is eluding me right now. They, they've so, fully they, documented that there was use of tools. They, they did not just have copper chisels and, and you know, plastic forks. They, they were using something of a higher technology than we give them credit for. Much higher technology. I totally agree. Power tools may, be even, may not even be power tools. It may be some other form of tool that's well, Sonic, the future. So, so, it could yeah. be, you know, heat. It could be sound. Yeah, it could be, it could be sound. sound. I think sound actually could be good. By the way, so 
I'm now inside the Grand Gallery. This is a point where a lot of people don't actually go. There's these funny niches that are, or niches, 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 anyway, whichever cut, you'll see the Grand Gallery in a second. They've got these funny, I, by the way, we had two hours where we could go anywhere in it. Normally when you're a tourist, you can only go in certain areas. Yeah, I could have gone anywhere and we did inside this pyramid and, and you'll see a lot of pictures of it. I've also got photos of, you know, Gatton Bricks, um, you know where they sent the, um, yeah, the air shafts. I've got some pictures up yeah. the air shafts. I'll show you all them as well because they're really interesting. Again, people don't normally get to go there, and I'll show you what they've got inside there. They've got this weird machine in there, and I'll show you the weird machine as well. That's really interesting, by the way. At the bottom so, of the Grand Grand Gallery. Hang on, here we go. Like so, called the top of the well shaft. Here we are. So this is where we are at the moment. This is the tunnel that goes up before you get to the Grand yeah, Gallery. So this is to pretty the right much of that picture. To the right over here. Oh, I'm sorry. You're you're in the shaft. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the shaft. In the this is yet. this is what you pretty much see on first going into the pyramid. We'll keep going. You'll see it in a right. Here we go. Now I'm in the gallery. Now I'm in the gallery. Right. To the right of that picture is the entrance to the, right. to the well shaft, as they like to call it, that goes down to the grotto that they like to call. Ah, oh, no, no, no. That's the left. That's this way. That's this way. You mean the pit? They call it, or the grotto, or the sump, or whatever. Yeah, which goes right yeah. down. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went down there. I didn't get pictures of that bit. And let's just see what I did get pictures of. So this is the gallery, as you can see. Um, pretty rubbish pictures since I'm climbing up it. Let's keep going. Uh, by the way, this didn't feel to me like it was made for men to be inside it, by the way. There was absolutely, obviously, they put this no, staircase in. I believe it was a functioning tool. Exactly. But there was no way that this was made for people to see it. It wasn't, it's not well, well enough, um, you know, um, presented. And it's the wrong sort oh, of shape. On, it, was, it was made for a funeral possession for progression yeah, to be able to yeah, yeah, walk. Yeah. Is inside the chamber. That is one of oh, that's one of Gantenbrick's chambers. Okay, and right. the other side. That would be the south shaft. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's one. And there's another one on the other side. Okay. Now, did you get a picture head on yep. with that so you can see the crack that they kind yeah, of yeah, patched yeah, yeah. up? Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Yep. So they've got this thing, which they've got this weird machine in at the moment, which is. So I'm in the Queen's chamber now, by the way, right? Just mm -hmm. so we all know where we are. Uh, let's see what I did get. So this is us looking at this weird machine. And they've got these weird boxes in here as well. By the way, this is off limits at the moment. As you can see, it just looks like a like a building site, right? Look at the beauty of the way they join those together. It's fantastic, isn't it? Um, just incredible. Uh, let's. Because I think some of this is film. I can't remember whether I filmed it or photographed it. So hang on. Excuse me. <laughs> hey, Toady, let him steer you. It'll be a lot quicker if we can steer you rather than you steer us. Yeah, well, I'm just well, seeing what I've got. There's a fence in front of it. Yeah, That's and annoying. look, they've got look, they've got this weird machine. Can you see? They've got this weird... Look, can you see it? I, I see what, the weird machine. That? They also put a fence. Yeah, they've got some weird machine. Look, no, whatever. Um, hang on, let's see if we can find the video. Totally, that machine that yeah. you're referring to, do you think that that's oh, uh, off the there, time? There it is. Oh. I think that's there all the time, by the way. I think it might be part of the Mison detector. I don't know. Um, because they're looking for cameras. Yeah, yeah. That, that's you probably it? you. They they're putting the thing in there that create. Um, it's like an X-ray for for muton. What do they call it? That's it. Mison. Uh, yeah, that's it. Mison or misons or muons. Muons. Right. Muons. Isn't they, it? They're trying to establish the density of certain areas of the structure using the X-rays that are.
Oh, that's very oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. And look, you can really see the detail of the stuff in there as well. Look, people's cigarette butts that they flicked in there. Lovely. That's the gods. Because at the moment, by the way, you're not allowed in here, this queen's bit. Oh, yeah, look, you can see the way it's constructed. Can you see how they constructed that shaft in the middle of mm -hmm. this pyramid? It's incredible, by the way. Really is this incredible. One ones, is this one of the ones that they call vents that line up with... Um, oh, right. That's what they like, yeah. they like yeah. to call vents. But they, they didn't call them vents. ever yeah. protrude to the outside of the structure. In fact, they found what uh, Gettenbrink actually called is uh, um, UROs, un unmovable rock objects. But we like to call it Grant Gantenbrink's door, which is at the end of each of the shafts, which kind of dictates that they were not air shafts. Because why would you put a door in them? Yeah, they're the ones with and those little not bronze even a door. handles. It's, it's just a, yeah. a it's, fixed it's, rock. Uh, it's a rock. But that's a yeah, whole exactly. other story. It's, it's a rock. And look at this. They've hollowed this bit out. Can you see? They put a lid on it. But this is hollowed out like a gutter almost. Can you see in this photo? Because I've never noticed that before. Um, there's probably other people who've got good shots. So there's a nice shot, actually, of it, isn't it? Can you see? Well, it's, it's, they did it's, a documentary you... where they sent little robots up there. But they don't show the whole boring video of the robot, you know, transversing the entire shaft. They show little clips of it. I, I'd like to find somebody that has access to the whole entire so boring I. I'd love video to see the whole I'd like to see the whole show. entire boring exactly. video exactly and see how the shaft is built what's in it is there anything you know are there any marks yeah is there anything on it because it would be really interesting wouldn't it yes Tony, so that, uh, were these yeah. big enough for you to crawl in or were they tiny no 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 no, 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 no. these are tiny square. no otherwise i would have crawled in them trust me we were we were adventuring this night we had two hours with nobody um to tell us all now that what no you're God. looking into is about a meter square yeah this is this whole room here smaller than the room i'm in now and this thing here is you, you could you could get inside that bit yeah, this is the crack bit the angel was asking about right the, the crack is to the right of the picture he has right there to the right the cracks over here is it and it's been filled in right it's not this crack here no it it uh, the official story is there was a crack in the wall which i really mm. think was uh, proof of electrical arcing and it was mm -hmm. a scarring from an electrical arcing. Mm -hmm. And they punctured a hole through into the crack. And then the, the rod he was using, which was kind of like a um, the width of a coat, metal coat hanger, protruded through. And he found out there was a void behind there. And then they cut through there to find the shaft or the conduit, as I like to really refer to it, behind there. And then they tapped around on the other side till they found another void and cut through that to find the north shaft and they called them air shafts until they explored them and found the you know the rock objects up there and then they called them again to bring stores and then they put fabrications of stories of spirits going up and stuff like that i don't know oh that's right yeah the idea that the spirits would descend because look here's the other shaft on the other side this one the right. other the other um, shaft, and they're both opposite each other, which is really interesting as well. Well, Almost they're not like completely some, opposite. One is like six inches purpose. deeper into the room. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, but it's almost like there's some purpose to them. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I believe there is a purpose. Yeah, to them. Feeding <laughs> something, or dripping something in, or letting something out, or gases, or well, this is going up to the pyramid. I just wonder if we might see your little uh, tunnel. I may have to turn the, um, um, they, you know, this is the guards, yeah. Uh, I can't see that tunnel. And now we're just going in. See, now one thing that, that people don't, because they, it doesn't click with them, is mm. when you're entering in through what they like to call the thieves' entrance, the mm -hmm. one that was fab forged to get into it, you're walking through boulders and fill. Ah, You're not walking so through yeah. um, squared blocks like is if you were playing playing Minecraft. But they don't really take that into consideration. They still like to say it's made of 2.3 million stones, and they get that number based on they're assuming wrongly that it's made of you know evenly spaced Lego blocks. But the thieves' entrance entrance itself 
disproves that theory, but they still stick with it, which goes back to why I say they found an area of less density, which could just be sand, but mm -hmm. they want to think that it's all made of Lego or millions blocks. of blocks. So, so this is the bit which goes down to the grotto or the pit here. Can you see this this bit that goes down here that we're about to go past now? Yes. And what I did is I carried on going up. Can you see? So that went down there. I don't know if I point my camera down it or not. Probably someone's. By the way, at this point, you're not allowed cameras inside, so I'm trying to hide my camera so they don't see it on the CCTV. Later on, I realised they were not going to come and get us. But at this point, I was trying to be sort of careful. Yeah. I know it's a bit boring, but this is you're not allowed to film technically inside the pyramid. Um, so yeah, that is going down to the grotto. I don't know on this clip whether I got any more. Yeah, like we're you know, there's no guide at this now point. They just left us to what it. What type camera were you using? Just a, were you were using your iPhone or something? Yeah, this is just the iPhone. Yeah, yeah, this is just yeah. the iPhone. Oh, they Pretty may good, take good enough pictures. I'd like to get in there with like a Rilo or something. Are you familiar with those toys? No, no, no. What's that? It's a 360 camera. Oh yeah, that would be fantastic. The trouble is because they don't let I, you I in. I want to see how things relate to each other forward yeah, and come, back i mean you yeah. take a picture one direction even if you turn your camera around you're not really always going to be at the same azimuth where if you get a 360 camera you're going to get a much better so view. Uh, uh, the, the problem is i had to leave my proper camera my slr right uh, yeah they, the they entrance. Did, study, you, you gotta leave the them on the bus yeah exactly yeah, i wasn't allowed to take it in so this is all with my iphone but look it's pretty good look, you get the sense of the grand gallery there i don't know you know it's not the world's best filming but look and there's you, know I mean? yeah, There's you really the need to lick somebody's butthole in order to get some cameras in there. Yeah. I mean, we could have taken them in had we but known that, you know what I mean, that they didn't care. But we were told, do you sort of mean, that we weren't allowed to do it yet because this was quite unusual. We had no guide with us, as I say, and we were there for two hours. It was after dark. They basically paid them 10 grand for our 50 people in two groups to go in. Um, and by the way, at this point, I'm killing. It's just going up there is it doesn't look it right. The reason that camera is wobbling so much is I'm out of breath because this is like you can't breathe very uh, easily inside the pyramid. It's very, um, very, very humid. Yeah, oh, that's I was why they collapse. have the air shafts. <laughs> I'm being facetious. Yeah, you, you're, you're, in, you're, in a, you're in an exhaust chamber, right? Yeah. I think that Grand Gallery was more of a condensation chamber, but you're, you are in a chamber, yes. Oh, it's here we go. Here's one. A closed here's, system. Here's one of Gantenberg's things. Now we're going to try and shine a light on it. Here we go. Hopefully. Hang on. Where's the uh, thing gone? Have you been there at all, Angel? Have you been out to Egypt yet? No. Nope. Not at all. You definitely should. You... It's a little bit out of my price budget. Is it? And oh, right now, I'm almost the... afraid to go there. There's a lot of turmoil in the area. Yeah. And then. Yeah. They will say that, don't they? Um, oh, did you get into the subterranean chamber? Uh, no, I didn't go down into the grotto. No, 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 no. no. The grotto is oh. in the middle. The subterranean, the lowest part. Um, I just wonder what I got movers of. Hang on a sec. You, just you had to climb down a 150 shaft, 150 foot shaft. No, I didn't climb down. Well, no, I didn't climb. I only went up. Okay. So I definitely didn't go down anything. I've got loads in the king's chamber. That's a, and that's amazing, by the way. The resonance in the king's chamber is one of the most amazing things I've ever experienced. Like, I'm not someone who's into going arm and all that kind of thing. The resonance there was incredible. Lying in that cask and listening to five other people going arm, it's like it actually resonates your body. It's so resonant, that chamber. It's almost like you're in a fucking church. No, 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 no. Uh, not more than a church, a like nothing I've ever experienced. Yeah, it's just incredible. Actually, what's going on here? This is sideways. Oh, that's probably leaving. I'm trying to find the. Um, uh, let me try and find. Uh, let me try and find a bit of it. Um, sorry, because this is probably in it. Oh yeah, so this is sitting inside it. So we're inside the um, the supposed sarcophagus here. You can't see bugger all, can you? Um, doesn't help, does it? Uh, let's see if any of the movies came out. No, so that's the gallery again. Let's get rid of that one. How do you get this? Sorry, apologies for that. I just don't know what movies I've got. But yeah, we sat inside the. Um... Yeah, this one is probably it. Yeah, you... can you hear the sound when I share it? I'm not hearing sound. Okay. Here we are. So this is inside the Kings. There is a setting you can choose that uh, 
fix your com the sound from the computer or the sound from your mic. Because look, you can even hear some of the resonance there just from people talking. You probably can't hear it, can you? Now, did you notice to the you see? You see? right of yeah. that rock, the opposite side from where that like air conditioner or whatever that thing is right. in the so, corner? Uh, over here. Yeah, that they yeah. the floor is actually a piece of sheet metal made to look like rock. No, I didn't. I didn't walk in that corner, interestingly. So what is uh, why? Why do they do that? Because there's a hole there that goes about 10 feet. Mm -hmm. Down into something. It goes down below the floor level. Uh, right. Let's look at the let's have a look. I probably didn't. I thought I did pretty good pictures of all of the king's chamber. Let's have a look. Let's see what I got. Is that it? Mm -mm, that's not the king's chamber. That's actually the <clears throat> outside of the pyramid. Oh, hang on. can we see? So, is this where the tunnel is, or is this the tunnel here? That that you can see it over to the left. Hang on. Uh, here or here? Wiggle your mouse. I don't see your mouse. Sorry, my mouse is here. Can you see my mouse? Not yet. <laughs> Hang on. Actually, the Skype glitched. Oh, okay. I can see your mouse. Yeah. Um, there, I can't see or... the picture, but I can see your mouse. But yes, it, it should be right underneath your mouse. No, it's... There we I go. Mean, it's, uh, that little dark rectangle. Yeah, the dark rectangle. That one? Or this one? Can't see your mouse again. It's nine o'clock, Tony. Totally. Uh, above, above the person with the blue hat. All right. Person with the blue hat. Okay, per perfect. Ah, so here, this funny little thing. It's bang on nine o'clock. Yes. So I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's two blocks across from nine o'clock. Yes. And then there's like a, a like a space, and then there's like a more of a, a sideways block. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that 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 you're in the right place. We can see your mouse now. For some reason, it's kind of okay. shows and then doesn't show. Okay, brilliant. You can see it. It's here, isn't it? Yeah. That's really yep, interesting. Right where your mouse is. Yeah, I didn't, mouse never is. noticed that before. I never noticed that before. Yeah, they don't point it out to people. Yeah, funny that, isn't it? Uh, as you can see, the box, by the way, it's like a big toilet. It's like an open air sewer here. Ah, oh, look, that's really nice as well, where you can see some of the old, uh, it's, it's some of the old blocks that's on the, the outside. structure. Yep. This is the Queens or uh, so called Queens. Yeah, whatever. Or Caffrey one. Yeah. I've got some. Um, pictures taken in uh, 1890 and I've compared them corner to corner by the way this is one of these um, mastabas um, here's another mastaba um, I've um, compared the side yeah and it really is pretty much unchanged so I found some old stereographic uh, bought in an auction some stereographic pictures of Egypt you know that some photographer took in the 1880s at the side and it's really interesting to see if anything's changed and it really hasn't every block is literally the same like I've done a block by block comparison because I stood in the same place. Do you see what I mean? And took the same picture. By the way, you can't see here the famous, you know, the fact that it's actually got, you know, um, eight sides or whatever. Yeah, because, you know, it's flexed yes. in the middle. Uh, you can't really see it on this one, can you? Uh, I'd argue that it's actually kind of 12. Um, by the way, there is something you can notice here, though, which is really interesting. And you can see it in some of my other photos as well, if you get the light right. And you see there's like a course of blocks up to this level. And then can you see there's another level up to here and then can you see there's another level up to here and then can you see another level up to here can you see that can you see um, can you can see you these open like up another web page uh, another web a web page yes just a normal web page okay uh web page right there are the actual courses that was done by a guy in the 1800s uh, mr berg or something like that where he measured the elevation oh. And the uh, deviation in toward, inwards of the elevations. And you can see there's a sweeping pattern. If you zoom out on that a bit, you can see there's a sweeping pattern. And I'll tell you that that pushed the static electricity up towards the top one third of the structure. But the changes in coarseness were not a mistake. Now, look, that's really interesting. Now, there's another guy from the University of San Diego that just did it again using um, more modern ways of doing it with, with cameras and, and uh, well, cause, uh, just, ste just cause, yeah. stereo cameras. Because I would say, I can't draw on this picture. I don't see, oh no, I can, look, I can. I, can, I don't know if I mess it up if I draw on it. Um, 
I wonder if it stores this. Anyway, I would say, I've got lots of pictures of it anyway, I suppose. I'd say there's a layer there. There's a layer there. You can there. see there's a, a few of the larger there. hurdles, jumps, deviations, it's, and they'll line up with that that, that I just directed you to. Yeah. They will, won't they? And there's another one like there. Oh, and there's another one there, isn't there? And then there's like one there. You know, it's getting harder to see them, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Well, the, there's a there's a couple of very distinct jumps, and when you look back at that, you see there's a sweeping pattern. Yeah. Where it gets big, small, smaller, 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 smaller. Yeah, big, it's really smaller, interesting. Smaller, yeah, smaller, yeah, yeah, smaller, yeah, 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 yeah. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Super interesting, isn't it? It is, because it's functional. And it's deliberate. There's no way that's accidental. They didn't do that accidentally because it looks like it's accidental, doesn't it? It looks like, oh, yeah, they just put a load of blocks, whatever blocks. Well, they didn't do again, anything. Again, we, we didn't really understand what static electricity was and and how it reacts to natural environments up until relatively recently. You know, now we put anti-static things in our dryers and we ground forklifts so they, you know, people don't shock themselves when they get on and off of it. You know, things of that nature, we now compensate for it. Very interesting, isn't it? Why they put those blocks like that. Now that you know there's a hole there, you can see it on every picture you look at, can't you? Yeah, I know. It's funny, isn't it? Once you know it's there. Um, the Mastabas around, the, I mean, the whole thing's fascinating. That's a nice view. This is the view that I did, the, the, the stone by stone comparison. This is the north corner. I think it's the north corner, northeast corner, where I think they used to go up. Oh, yeah, look, you can see some of the facing stones, which is interesting as well. You know, the whole thing. Look, 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 look at the line. Look at the line there. Look, look at the line. Look how good that line is. Mm -hmm. Pretty good, isn't it? For whatever, supposed megalithic builders. I mean, it's slightly kinked, isn't it, because of the blocks, but it's it's, so, it's pretty good. Tony, did did tell you that the Mastabas had um, dead bodies in it? Uh, they didn't tell us anything. I went uh, exploring the last day. It was a free day. I went exploring the Mastabas. These are interesting. I don't know whether these are contiguous. This limestone now, pavement is, and it's got don't, scarring don't from electricity. Don't move that picture yet. Oh, sorry. Okay. This one? Yeah, the one you're <laughs> on right there. Yep. Now, if you were to take that, that what you like to call the casting stones right there, yep. facing stones, whatever. Yeah, facing, casing, whatever. And, and yep. you were to take a laser and shoot it up, uh -huh. the corners of each of the layers protrude past that facing facing stone so if really? there were other stones on the face they would actually be at a next level out a couple inches out yeah, I, see. I mean they'd be too far I, out yeah. I, I believe that that is there for communication purposes and to give you the ability to get measurements from it because if you there, there's a guy Carl Monk which I really feel has interpreted how to read the structures it's all done with math and shapes mm -hmm. um, a universal language of, of math and shapes where certain shapes dictate certain consistent like like roman numerals and like braille mm -hmm. it's a consistent number and, and using those mathematically you can get answers I wonder how much they took away to build Cairo as well from this pavement. <clears throat> well, pavement or energy, because this has got a lot of scarring from electricity, they say on it. I don't know if uh, I've, I've actually taken a picture of some of those shots as well. I don't know if you've seen them before. Do you know where it's all melted from the electricity, supposedly, that hits, hit, hit it? I don't know no, if you're uh, aware of these. OK, so there's a couple of theories. Um, that supposedly, it's like an energy generator or something. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'll show you those shots in a sec. Hang on, let me find them. Um, now, I, I do want to let you guys know I've, I've got to go at about 15 minutes. Oh, that's OK. We can do another time. That's all good. Oh, look at that. That's a nice one as well. <laughs> Panoramic. Um, let's see uh, if I can find the big electric crack. This is at night as we came out of the pyramid. Uh, I may have to dig it out for another time. But basically, it's a part of this um, sort of supposed granite pavement, and it's got this huge scarring on it from the supposed electricity or lightning or something that hit it. There's a picture of me. Ah. Now, now, there's basalt, the black rock outside. Ah, the, the basalt pavement, east, yeah. The east side. 
Yes. I've got now, loads basalt of will of act the same way a Faraday ring does around our electricity cables these days. It's a 